Okay, so when we're dealing with cellular respiration and photosynthesis, the last section before your final review, for the record, I have posted for you uh, a final review. That's correct. I have posted for you a final review slash study guide. It is on Schoology. It is not for a grade. The study guide is long. It's over 100 pages long. And the pages are, the, the study guides meant for you to go over whatever it is you need to go over. It is not meant for you to read the whole thing page by page. Is that understood? Yes, sir. So you go through it, you flip through it, you scan it, and stuff that you don't remember, you go over. Included in that 100 pages is notes. I included notes explaining things. So there's 100 pages of practice problems, for instance. There aren't, no. There's like maybe, I don't know, 15 pages of practice problems you might want to try out. There's um, outlines of some main ideas. And then I gave you notes, okay? So it's all there. The entire semester's work is there, except for photosynthesis and respiration, which we're going to finish respiration today. Tomorrow you'll have a POGIL on respiration. I will not be here tomorrow, but let me be very, very clear. There will be a stack of respiration work for you to do. There will be questions on the final on that work. So if you sit here and waste your time in class tomorrow, it's on you. The assignment's due at the end of the period. It is a POGIL. I'm going over a lot of the background you need right now. So you should be able to easily go through it tomorrow. Remember, with a POGIL, all the answers are right there in front of you. You just have to actually pay attention to what's going on, read carefully, and the answers are there. So I'm going over the background information now, and tomorrow should be easy peasy. Get it done. Wednesday, we'll, go, we'll wrap it all up, and then Wednesday and then Thursday, we're going to do review for anything that you want. So what do I expect? I expect that you went over, went over these 100 pages and you identified where you need help. And I will clip this, this slide out and forward it to your parents in, school, in Jupiter so that they're all aware of what the plan is. You identify where you need help, and, what, and once you identify that, you, one, you, you write down specific questions. Now I posted this last week, I told you I posted it last week. I told you it was not for a grade, but that it was for your final. I told you your final was going to be very important for your grade. I told you all that, but of course kids don't listen, so I'm going over it again. So write down a specific question. Two, you have tutors have been available for you after school. My understanding on Mondays for science For biology in the dining hall. My understanding is that people have not gone for tutoring. So one of two things is happening. You understand and you're keeping up with your studies or you're lost and you're not going and you're not and you're not caring until the last minute and your grade's going to suffer. Kind of that's the only real two thing, or maybe you can't stay, right? So I guess that's another possibility. So those are kind of the possibilities I'm thinking are happening. If there's something else, you need to communicate what the issue is, all right? Three, 
You need to come Thursday or Friday before school. And bring up the, right, ask these specific questions, right? Specific questions, not, I don't understand anything. Well, that's not true, first of all. Or you would be failing, you'd have a zero. Some people have a zero, and maybe they don't understand anything, but they haven't turned anything in. Those, most of those people have just not shown up to class. I think there's like three of them out of 130, so that's not horrible, but I really am trying to reach out to those three people. The point is, most of you have some idea what's going on. You just need specific clarification, so you need to put that effort in, okay? Thursday or Friday before school, uh, ask your questions. And we will have a morning, this Thursday or Friday, I will have morning study sessions, uh, and we're just going to go over stuff Thursday or Friday. Uh, come Wednesday... Or Thursday slash Friday in class, we will be reviewing. Now, I can start reviewing. I will review. You know I can talk. You know I know this stuff. I'll just start going over material. That's not going to be as helpful for you as if you come with your reflected, written questions and you're asking questions that you need help with. That's the best way of handling it. So making sure that you've gone over these pages, most of them, again, most of these pages are notes. You don't have to read, you have notes, you've taken them in class. You have summaries. Again, you have summaries, you've taken them in class. Uh, you have uh, outlines. You don't need them if you know the material, but you can look, look over them. But you do also have practice questions. I would go over those practice questions. If you're like, I think I understand, then you need to bring it up and ask me to make sure that you, under, you got it right. You don't want to study something wrong and then come in and to get it wrong on the final. Like make, check your work, correct? And then the other thing is, if you're trying to do it and you get lost, you have to be honest with yourself. Say, look, I don't understand this. Then ask it Wednesday during class, Thursday during class, Thursday morning, Friday morning, right? I'll be here late Wednesday after school uh, with the D&D club. I'll be here Thursday after school, but then I'll be uh, after school as well if you need help. Uh, so those are, those are some options for you. That's the support I can offer you, okay? And these practice questions are gonna be very similar to the practice question, to the actual test questions. Okay. So look at those practice questions, try them. If you're having trouble, see me. I'm not giving you credit for it, because that would be just, it, it would drive me insane trying to figure out who did it, who didn't, and then it just is, a, it's, a, it's just a mess. So the best thing is to use a study guide as it's meant, which is a study guide and a final review. Today, we're gonna to go over photosynthesis. Again, I'm, let me outline what we're doing today. Uh, not photosynthesis, I'm sorry. But today we're doing cellular respiration. And then Wednesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, you're gonna do a process-oriented, guided inquiry lesson. A POJO, and remember the answers are in it. So it should be, I think most of the answers are pretty step-by-step. -step. They take you step-by-step -step through the process of cellular respiration, which we will have covered today, which is Monday. And then Wednesday, We'll wrap up, hopefully, quickly, uh, photosynthesis and uh, cellular respiration. By the way, that includes, when I say cellular respiration, that also includes, uh, and you'll understand why in a second, cellular respiration and fermentation. 
Yes. So this will this will solve all those questions. This is cellular energy, and that's the plan for this week. Are we good? I looked at the uh, at the uh, bulletin this morning. It looks like there's nothing that's out of the ordinary happening. Uh, just the fact that your schedule, your final schedule is coming up. You know, next week is finals. You have a two-hour final in this class. It'll be the la It is a two-hour final. There will be no notes. There will be many questions. It will cover almost everything in the study guide, which is everything we covered this semester, including photosynthesis and respiration. Your final, I understand, unless there's been a change, your final is on Monday. First thing, Monday morning. 8.40, Monday morning. Yes, absolutely. Monday, tier, put the, plug this in. Yes, I do want you to. She's right. I want you to come and, and fill in. And remember, any, anything with missing work, any errors, whatever, we still have that week when we get back from winter break. We still have a week. But you will know, I will have everything graded this week that's been turned in. Next week when you walk in, the final is going to be on a computer. As soon as you're done, it's going to self-grade. It's going to go right into your Schoology grade, and you'll know before you leave what your grade is on the report card, unless, unless you need to do something about it. There will be an extra credit packet available, right? So let's, let me quickly outline that before I go on. So next week is finals. Can we close the door? Next week is finals, right? So by your test is on Monday. Some people have it on Tuesday, and some of my kids have it on Wednesday. So, But if you miss a test, you'll have to come in on Friday. If you don't miss a test, you won't uh, come in at all on Friday. You will have the afternoon. You're, you're going to be done at 12, but I'll be here. So I'll be doing grades and checking work, et cetera. If you want to meet with me after school, to, uh, after, you, after 12, you can meet with me and discuss any issues you have with your grade or whatever. I told you the last day I was going to accept late work for first semester is the 15th. I will not. He said the 15th. The 15th. Yes, thank you. The 15th is the last day I'm, I'm accepting any late work for first semester. However, there will be an extra credit uh, packet available for winter break. All right, that you can do uh, for extra credit. It can be for first semester. Or second semester. If you have an A, for instance, but you want to get ahead. You can do it for you can do this for first uh, for second semester if you'd rather. OK, now. There will also, you cannot do it if you're failing or have a D in the class. You can't do the extra credit, but you can do what a remediation packet. So let's say you fail the test. Let's say you're fa failing the class. When you're done with the test, you have a big old F on Schoology, right? You can remediate by doing this packet over winter break. So what would it bring our grade up? It depends how well you do. It can bring your it, you, if you it will basically be the first semester's worth of work in a compact form. You'll get a chance to redo. Basically, it's remediate. It's literally remediation. It's like credit recovery. So if you do really well, it can bring you up to an A. Yeah, why not? A. Is it, but is is you think it's gonna be easy? No. 
and while your friends are ex uh, enjoying their winter break, you're working, right? And your family's doing their meals, their special meals for whatever holiday you're celebrating, you're working, is that gonna feel good? No, it's not. So I would do the effort before winter break. That's what I'm saying. And if you haven't found the motivation to do it all semester, my, my concern is you may not feel that motivation during winter break when everybody's celebrating or relaxing or whatever you do, right? So uh, planning on doing some extra credit and getting ahead is probably better, a better idea than trying to, to remediate uh, the first semester. But that's up to you how you want to handle it. It's just an opportunity I'm giving you, but that's it. I will give you those. Uh, when we come back, there will be work going into, into first semester grade book. But honestly, I don't see how it could impact your grade. It will not impact your grade, all right, for the most part. Uh, if you're like on the border, if you're like half a percent away from the next grade, maybe. Uh, we'll probably have a lab and some activities uh, when we get back from winter break, okay? That we'll have to do with this extra credit packet. Are we good? All right, so that's the plan. I think this gives everybody the most opportunities to do well, even if you're not doing well in the class right now. Okay? And I will message this out. I'm going to take this 16-minute slide and send it to your parents and you and make sure that everyone knows that, you know, that this is the, that this is the case. I'll type it out and also send this to them. All right. Cellular respiration. Now let's get on. We, in photosynthesis, in photosynthesis, we made. So let's let's think about this. In photosynthesis, that's right. In photosynthesis, and and remember, photosynthesis happened in in eukaryotic cells in this organelle called the chloroplasts in usually in plants uh some proteins have chloroplasts uh like algae uh however uh some bacteria can do this without a chloroplast just remember that uh in photosynthesis what we did as someone just said uh we took the sun's energy in the form of light we call they, we call that a photon is a particle of light and we and the photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide co2 plus water and it makes c6 h12 o6 right which is glucose an aqueous solution aq plus uh oxygen gas so it takes the carbon so to be clear that the carbon here this carbon from the air is put into sugar all right the oxygen from water the oxygen from water is lost is either used or put out by the plant. Remember that the leaf has these, these openings, these little openings uh, at the bottom of the leaf, there's these little openings that allow gases in and out, right? correct? It, they're called, remember, they're called stomata. And that's aqueous. This is AQ, aqueous. So C6H12O6, which is glucose, aqueous solution, oxygen, gas. And this is gas. I didn't put it, but CO2, remember, the CO2 is, is gas and the water is, is liquid, right? So... That's just telling you the phase that this whole process is going through. So that should be a quick synopsis of what we went through last week. The reverse of this, 
So you see these arrows are reversible, right? One going this way, the other going that way. Uh, the reverse of this is called cellular respiration. That's what we do. The plants do it too. That's what they, 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 they make sugar to eat it. And of course, energy, uh, ATP is made out of this. We know that. Let's go on and look and see what this looks like, the reverse. We're looking at cellular respiration, which is what we do in our body. Animals, consumers do this. Producers do photosynthesis and cellular respiration. That's right. All all the carbon from photosynthesis goes into sugar. Okay. It goes first into glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde three phosphate, but then it eventually gets put into glucose, right? Okay. Or fructose, or ribose, or any of those sugars. So living cells require energy from the outside, because why is it doing that? I want to remind you of this idea of chaos, that entropy, a measurement of chaos is entropy. Entropy is always increasing in the universe from, right, I believe the example I gave you was uh, dust to dust and ashes to ashes and dust to dust, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have living things, eventually you will turn right back into the earth from which we came. Uh, that's because eventually our everything breaks down. The universe is going towards breaking down. But life fights that. And in order to do that, we need energy. So we need energy. Originally, most life depends on energy from the sun. Some animals, such as the giant panda, obtain energy from eating plants. Other animals... Uh, uh, feed on other organisms. Like we eat plants and we eat animals. But all the energy originally comes from the plants. So you look at a giant panda. It's eating... It's eating its bamboo. And it's gonna... That's where it gets its energy. From the plant that made sugar. If we were going to eat, we would eat. If we we're going to eat the panda, we would get the energy from the panda, right? Energy flows into an ecosystem as sunlight and leaves as heat. That's right. Photosynthesis generates oxygen and, and organic molecules, glyceraldehyde three phosphate, which then can be used to make any number of molecules through various pathways. Cells use chemical energy stored in organic molecules to regenerate ATP. So we need to have ATP and we just keep making it by taking the energy that we consume. We're consumers, right? We're not producers. We consume the energy, eat it, and we use it to make ATP. That's the whole point, we're to making, make ATP. We're making the mitochondria. That's right, excellent. We're making the mitochondria, excellent. So the, the general format is this, right? You get light energy coming in, the uh, chloroplast into the chloroplast. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll print these for you if you like. And I will uh, have them ready for you by lunch. So light comes into the chloroplast. The chloroplasts make sugar. This, the organic molecules is sugar and oxygen. Both of these go into the mitochondria. Now, the plant has mitochondria as well. Mm -hmm. So they'll take the sugar and oxygen that they make and they'll make their own ATP. So they don't even need, to, they don't even need a lot of oxygen from the outside because they make their own. They make so much oxygen from water that they release a lot. Yes. So, you know the ATP synthase, what about, like... Um, I'll, sh I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. All right? So, what is that, like, the light energy that we can do that? 
There has to be the light energies going to the light reactions. The light reactions make... I'm moving on. The light reactions in the thalicoid create... Um, you know, we're not going to review that. We'll do that tomorrow. So you're going to... The whole point of photosynthesis is to make sugar. That's it. The whole point of cellular respiration is to make ATP. We need the energy from the sun so the, the chloroplast collects the energy and puts it into sugar. But when we want, when the plant or animals that eat the plants or animals that eat the animals that eat the plants, when they are trying to get the energy out, they need the energy out in the form of ATP. So the point of photosynthesis is making sugars and the plant cellular respiration making... ATP. For, to work. All work runs on ATP. All work, whether it be in a plant or an animal, only works on ATP. Just like you only work for money. Nobody's going to feed you in peanuts. Nobody's going to say, here, you, you spend the year working for me and I'll give you five hats, right? Or a hundred hats. That's not how you, it works, right? They have to give you money or you won't work, correct? The same thing is true of your cells. Your cells don't need cash. They need ATP. Most of the work runs on ATP. Most of it. Not all of it, but most of it. And when it when you change energy, you lose most of the energy. Every time you eat, you lose most of that energy to heat. To, Anything, anything that happens, anytime you change energy from what chemical to mechanical, from electrical to mechanical, from, chem, uh, from light to chemical, whatever happens, anytime you exchange it, you only capture 10%. You lose 90% to heat. It's just inefficient. All systems are inefficient. You'll have to study physics to understand the true nature of it. But the bottom line is, that's your job, physics. So you will lose most of the energy to heat. Because isn't the enzyme not down? The enzyme, all it does is help it go faster. It doesn't reduce the amount of heat that's produced. I mean, it doesn't like so much heat, it like, like becomes all... Um, like yes. But that, that's a good point. It does de, it does denature if it gets too hot? But this heat is is minimal compared to the kind of heat that you're talking about. All right. Several processes are central to cellular respiration and related pathways. By the way, I should mention that you've heard of anabolic steroids. No. So there's this word. Anabolic metabolism. You're taking health right now with Mr. We don't, we don't teach All right, shh. We're not talking about that. You're taking health. This, should, this is one of the topics in health. Mm -hmm. The other one is catabolic. Be, we're quiet now. So we have catabolic and anabolic metabolism. Anabolic means building. You're building something up. <laughs> building. Building up. So anabolic steroids build muscle. Mm -hmm. So people that want to build really big muscles are taking steroids, right? Don't do it, by the way. It's all kinds of negative impacts. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger says you shouldn't do it. And he says everyone did it when he was young. And he says he wishes he wouldn't have because it risked his life. It's not a good idea to use it. So anabolic steroids is building muscle. Catabolic metabolism is breaking down. So obviously, as a human being, you have to build up and you have to break down. Correct? All... Living systems have to build up and break down. Plants build up using photosynthesis. They build using photosynthesis. 
What do they do with cellular respiration? They break down. So cellular rest, so anabolic metab uh, in under anabolic metabolism, you would put you would put photosynthesis. Or in humans, it would be like muscle building, right? In under catabolic, you would put cellular respiration. So don't worry about the bullet point. It's exactly what I'm saying here, which is anabolic means to build, and that's photosynthesis. Catabolic means to break down, and that's cellular respiration. So we're taking the sugar that was built. If you're a plant, you built it. If you're an animal, you stole it. But you're taking that, that molecule of sugar that was built, and you're breaking it down to make ATP. Like, that's the point. The breakdown of organic molecules is exergonic. You know that from the last pogil. So the the building of the building up is do you think it's exergonic or endergonic? Endergonic. Endergonic. But yeah, endogonic means or ender, by the way, they do both. Exergonic means it's going out. You're 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 releasing energy. Endogo endogonic means it's going, energy is going in. So photosynthesis is going in, like enter. And, and exer is like exit, energy is coming out. Exactly right. And fermentation is also exergonic, by the way. Fermentation, we'll look at in a minute. Fermentation is what happens when you only partially break down the sugar. And you'll see why that happens. That's when there's no that happens when there's no oxygen. Doesn't fermented so this ha fermentation happens when there's no oxygen. Without oxygen, you got no choice but to do fermentation. Now I've told you before, and I'll say it now again, with fermentation, fermentation is in bacteria. And yeast, you produce CO2 gas and alcohol. And I've told you before, that's how we make alcohol. That's how we bake yeast. That's how we bake bread. We make the CO, we have the yeast make CO2 for us, and that makes little air bubbles in, little CO2 bubbles in the bread. That's what makes it rise. That's what make cake, you know, when you cut a piece of cake, yeah. you see those little holes? They were made by yeast that made CO2 in the, uh, while, it, while it was proved, while the, while the cake proved, it made little CO2 bubbles. And, of course, the heat killed the, the yeast, and now you have bread or cake. So when it comes uh, in humans, in humans, however... You and other animals. What what happens is you make CO two, gas, and lactic acid. There's a, lactic acid is not ideal. It is somewhat poisonous, and so you can't do that for very long. That's what everybody produces when you go up those stairs and you're breathing heavy. You're making lactic acid. The reason you're breathing heavy is you're running out of oxygen. So you breathe faster to try to get more oxygen. But if you don't, if you can't get it, you produce too much lactic acid and your system stops. So it's not, so that's one way you die when you're getting choked or when you, you're drowning. That is one main way. Yeah. Yes, they use albuterol. Asthm asthmatics use albuterol to open up the airways because what happens is with asthma, your body reacts to some kind of allergen and it closes the airways to protect itself. It doesn't want to let, it feels like there's poison in the air. It's, there's not. 
it's it's pollen or, or dust or something, but your body thinks it's poisonous, gets confused and closes the airways, but then that reduces the oxygen that gets into your blood, right? So you take albuterol to open those pathways again. Over time, most a lot of people that have childhood asthma grow out of it. They stop reacting to the allergens because their body's desensitized to it. Uh, some people develop asthma later in life. Regardless, the airways close up or open up depending on your body's sense of whether there's a danger or not. Yeah. For fermentation, like for sodas, is it when oxygen gets trapped and makes it feel bubbles? Soda? soda, no. We in in soda pop, we put it in ourselves. We take CO two and we shove it in with a machine with a pump. Uh, all right. So that's it for fermentation. We'll go over a little more in, in a little bit uh, in just a few slides. Aerobic respiration. That is what we that yields the most amount of ATP, and it that's when oxygen is present. You're doing this. It's very good at making ATP where fermentation is not that good at making uh, uh, ATP. It's not very good. It's actually pretty awful. That's why you die if you don't have... Because you can do fermentation. You do do fermentation when you're running out of oxygen. But it doesn't. it's not good enough to keep you going. Eventually, your system will collapse. Long to, do you know the first marathon? You know, marathons, you, you're doing fermentation. Do you know that, right? Because you're running out of oxygen you know, like Mr. Cooper when he does his marathon. Do you know what happened to the first marathon runner? Nothing. The first marathon runner died when they reached their goal. It, the first marathon runner, the reason we run marathons today is to commemorate the, um, a general who was, it was in, there was a war. The general gave a message to his messenger to take to, to his king, and it was something like 20 miles away, and the runner ran the 20 miles, and as he delivered the message, he died. And so we still, at thousands of years later, still run marathons in that honor. There's probably some legend to all this but the point is but running a marathon is running out of air so you what you have to do is lactic you do the, the way you do keep going is this this keeps you going it just doesn't do a very good job at it and it produces lactic acid which can build up and cause death so it isn't it is a problem Anaerobic respiration is similar to aerobic respiration, but consumes compounds other than O2. We're going to look at what that is. Cellular respiration includes both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So the bottom line is I already drew this. So you don't have to write this again. Again, I will give you the slides after lunch. Uh, so sugar and oxygen uh, produ uh, produce carbon dioxide and water and energy. So you see how you produce what photosynthesis, right, used? And you use what photosynthesis made. It's a perfect marriage, isn't it? It's ripe to create a cycle. That's how this planet has gone on for 3 billion years where plants have made oxygen in animals. Well, we haven't been around that long. Uh, something like two billion years where plants or, or producers make oxygen and animals use oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The transfer of electrons during chemical reactions releases the energy stored in ATP. Remember, how did we get the energy into the sugar? The electron transport chain, correct? So that's how we get it out, too, in electrons. The electrons are our link to energy, just like the, electro the electrons flowing through the wires produce energy for our lights, our cell phones, our, our, uh, our electronics, light, uh, our heat in some cases. Electrons also help us make ATP. We call these... 
as I told you before, when we something gets oxidized, something else gets reduced. And what does that mean? That means when when you when an atom, any atom gets an electron, it's become reduced, hasn't it? Its number has become more negative. Is that clear? So let's look at an example. And if let's take a look at this. Na and Cl, sodium chloride. When sodium comes into contact with chlorine, chlorine takes an electron and it becomes reduced. Do you see the negative? And when the opposite of being reduced is called oxidized. I can print that out too. Every, all the slides will be printed. When something gets oxidized, something else gets reduced. It's called an oxidation reduction reaction. It's not really that hard. When an electron gets transferred, something takes the electron, it becomes more negative. Is that, is that making it greater or making it smaller? Smaller. That's what negative means. It's going the opposite of making it bigger. So it, that's called reduced. The, making, it, making it more positive is called oxidation. I wish it was called posit positation or something like that, but no. Or if this is reduced, maybe this could be increased, I guess. Uh, I don't know. But this is called reduced. This is called oxidation. So we call it an oxidation reduction reaction. You will see this again in chemistry next year. Uh, you'll take chemistry, especially you, Missy, you want to be an astronaut or uh you want to be a cosmologist, you're going to have to understand that studying the planets and, the, and in cosmos, you have to study chemistry. This is a general, this is a more generalized, same thing, generalized formula. Anytime you have an, any kind of, if you have an X, this is X, Y, this is not, uh, these aren't elements, these are variables. You have an X with an electron, a Y that takes the electron, the Y becomes reduced, the X becomes oxidized. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's not really hard. Just a little, one more, a couple, wor couple more words. So basically, it's just the electron That's it. That's all. That's all. That's all that happened in photosynthesis, right? You move the electron from water threw it down electron transport chain, things kept getting oxidized, reduced, right? All the way down, right? And in the Calvin cycle, you had a section of the Calvin cycle where what? You had the reduction, right? That's right. Fixation, reduction, and then, and then regeneration. The reduction is where you reduced or you added electrons to the carbon, which allowed you to make the sugar, make the bonds. Because remember, what are chemical bonds? Sharing of electrons. It's all about the electron. Electron donors, it's interesting that the, the smallest, one of the smallest atomic particles is one of the most important pieces to life. Electron donors are called reducing agents Agents of reducing. I mean, that's easy, right? If you're going to say a reducing agent, agent, what's an agent? A realtor, a real estate agent does what? Who helps? Uh, really, that's right. Someone helps you find a house. What is it? What is a secret agent? Someone who does stuff secretly, right? So, what's a reducing agent? Is something that reduces. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So electron donor reduces because it, if it's giving an electron, it's reducing the thing it gave it to, right? So if I give you an electron, I reduced you. What did I do to myself? I made myself more positive, which we call, which we say oxidize. So we call these redox reactions. An example of a reaction between methane and oxygen. Let's take a look at methane and oxygen. We're looking at it right here, redox. Here's methane. It's a reducing agent. 
you burn it in your stove, okay? When you turn on your stove or your get water heater, go, you hear fire? That's methane burning. Met you also fart it? Your fart, this is the gas that you fart out. The smell comes from poop. It doesn't come from methane. Methane has no smell. Methane is the product of, of organic molecules breaking down. When you die and get and rot, you will turn into methane eventually. What's the difference or CO2. What's the difference between a regular molecule and an organic molecule? Oh, something that's good for you to review. Organic means it contains carbon. So uh, react, a methane is a reducing agent. It's going to give an electron to oxygen. Oxygen's going to oxidize methane. Methane's going to reduce oxygen. What happens is you make CO2. Methane turns into CO2 when you burn it. And that makes energy, releases energy in the form of a flame in our stove. Uh, and water. It produces water as well. But what happened, all that happened was that you shifted, you shifted bonds. Electrons got transferred and you shifted bonds. So instead of two oxygens bonded, bonded to each other, there, two oxygens are bonded to carbon. And then one of the other, uh, another oxygen bonds to two hydrogens. Now that doesn't make sense by itself until you see the coefficients. Since there's two of these, then you can have one, two, three. Because you can have two of these, one of these, and two of these. And now you got what? Two, four. Here you have four. So all there's a balance to the equation. Balancing the equation is that coefficient. All right? Don't forget that as you move on to chemistry next year, you'll see it again. And again, and again, the re most of the rest of your so time cool. in both high school and college, by the way. So that equation is four, that's four on each side? Huh? So that equation is four, that's four on each side? Yeah, there's four oxygens here, right? Because there's two here, right? Times two, that's four. And then here there's two, that's right here as well. And then here there's one, but this times two, isn't it? So 2 times 1 is 2, so that's 2 plus these two is 4. So they balance out. You can do the same with the hydrogen. There's four hydrogens here. There's two hydrogens here, but then there's what? Two of them, so there's four hydrogens on this side as well. So they balance out. The point is the re electrons transfer with the bonds. So you change the, the molecules. By changing the molecules, the bonds get rearranged. Those are what we call redox reactions. Have they ever been a change with the bond these have been changed? Then it's, it, yeah, if they don't change, they're not, it's not a chemical reaction, right? So only, you only get a chemical reaction if the molecules exchange electrons and rearrange themselves. So in cellular respiration, glucose is oxidized. Remember, in the Calvin cycle, we reduced carbon to make glucose. So in order to get the energy out, we have to oxidize glucose. We have to burn glucose. Burning is oxidation, by the way. Burning, burning is a form of oxidation. That's why we say, I got to go burn off my hamburger. I got to go burn off my, 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 my I have to burn my calories. Why do we say that? Because it's oxidation. That's why you get hot when you work out, because you're releasing energy. That's right. You're putting it together. That's right. Is this going to be posted? Yeah, and I'm printing the notes as well. Okay, thank you. I have the whole notes up. All right. And if you have the notes already, you won't need it, but I'll make it anyway. So there's no, I don't want any excuses for grades. So C6H12O6. Plus oxygen, yield CO2 and water and energy. This is the energy we're going to use to make ATP. This becomes reduced into water. This becomes oxidized into CO2. Again, the opposite of photosynthesis. Now, there's dehydrogenase. There's NAD. This is not NADP. This is NAD. It's an electron carrier. 
I'm going to go quickly now because you don't need to know these slides. Here you have cellular respiration, glucose, and other organic molecules are broken down into a series of steps. Electrons from organic compounds are usually first transferred to NAD+, right? Because NAD plus is, a, is a carrier of electrons. And remember, electrons are the whole purpose here, so that we can get make that, a, that, make that ATP in the electron transport chain. So NAD plus is the acceptor. And NADH is a carrier, and it's ta and we're going to use that energy to make a concentration gradient and then make ATP, just like we did in photosynthesis, exactly what we did in photosynthesis, just in a different place, different organelle. And we're doing, we're making, uh, we're breaking sugar down, that's all. So when we look at this, you'll see that nicotinamide uh, in its oxidized form looks a lot like uh, nucleic acid, right? A nitrogenous base, nitrogenous base, ribose. In this case, it's a ribose sugar and a phosphate. So very much a, except you have it connected to a phosphate instead of a two phosphates, instead of one ribose to the next. So in its reduced form, it becomes nicotinamide with a hydrogen on it right instead of an, another one of these so it you don't do you need to know this no i just want you to know that it is reduced and the enzyme is dehydrogenase uh is it time to go all right well the rest of this will be posted all right nicotinamide dehydro uh nicotinamide uh nadh Passes through electrons to the electron transport chain. Uh, not much more to, see, to the yields ATP, as I said several times now. now. Let's take a look at what we're talking about here. If we if we take uh, we did this. There's a reason I did this in the lab that we did. We did this lab. We broke down water using a battery. We added electrons. We made hydrogen gas and, and oxygen gas. And then we made this explosion. We produced water. If you were here, you remember doing this in a little test tube. We had a little pop in the test tube. That was this. You have an explosion and you make water. The, free, the amount of free energy goes up as that happens. You release energy, so that's what we call free energy. So Gibbs free energy goes up when we make hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And when it comes down, it releases that energy. So you put energy into it, then you take it out, right? All right. So here in the electron transport chain, it's exactly the same thing. So we have hydrogen from food, from NADH, and you have oxygen gas, and you have electron transport chain, and in the end, the oxygen, by the way, the only reason you have oxygen is to be the final electron acceptor. I can tell you that I've seen that on at least three different AP exams, that oxygen is the final electron acceptor. In fact, in fact, I had that on my biochemistry exam in med school. So oxygen is your final electron acceptor. It takes the electrons so that the process can keep going. Just like a game of hot potatoes, if you don't move the potato down the chain, the chain backs up and the whole chain collapses, right? Okay. So in cellular respiration, you use the electron to go down the chain. It gets passed from one acceptor to the next. That electron goes into oxygen to make water along with the hydrogens from NADH they form water. So in glyc you have you have kind of three major steps. There's you know, some some things in between. Glycolysis, which happens in the cytoplasm, is the breakdown of sugar. So you have sugar, you have to break it down. You have a six carbon molecule, we break it down into two, three carbon molecules. Each glucose gets broken down. So you have citric acid, 
Uh, the citric acid cycle happens in the mitochondria, and oxidative phosphor phosphorylation happens in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The mitochondria also has two membranes. This is where we make ATP, just like, just like photosynthesis in the electron transport chain. Oxidative phosphorylation, it's called oxidative because oxygen is the final electron acceptor. In photosynthesis, it was NADPH that was the final electron acceptor in that electron transport chain. This electron acceptor is oxidative phosphorylation, is oxygen. That happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. The matrix is that, that inner space made by the inner membrane. Can I go on? Who read the chapter, by the way? No. Is this helping uh, put together this stuff for you? Any questions that are confusing to you about any of this? I know it's a lot, but we don't have a lot of time, so I have to keep going. Are we good? All right. This is the mitochondria. Notice it has, it has uh, several membranes, or two membranes. In, in the cytoplasm, we have what's called substrate-level phosphorylation. What do you think that means? Who can tell me what they think that means? Substrate level phosphorylation. You've covered enzymes, so you should know what substrate means. What's substrate? Yeah, yeah, it's one of the two puzzle pieces. Which is it? I, I, you can see it in your head, I can tell. But what, which one is it? What are the two? There's substrate, and then what's the other one? Enzyme, that's right. Enzyme and substrate. Enzyme and substrate. One puzzle piece is the enzyme, the other puzzle piece is substrate. So what do you think substrate level phosphorylation means? And substrate enzyme, right? So you got one molecule at a time making ATP. So that's what it means, is even though enzymes are fast, you saw that in our last lab, enzymes are fast, They're, they can only do one at a time. Oxidative phosphorylation is like a factory. It produces 36 at a time. It's crazy fast. So you are much more efficient than this. This is what is happening during uh, during fermentation, during anaerobic respiration. This is as much ATP as you can make in, without oxygen. This is how you can make uh, ATP without oxygen. We use the electrons carried uh, in glycolysis. We take glucose and we break it down in a three carbon molecule. Can you notice well, how many carbon in the molecule? Mm. Pyru uh, two pyruvates, one glucose, two pyruvate. That makes sense because six gets turned to three twice. So three, six to two, three carbon pyruvates. The pyruvate can be broken down to eight. We make some ATP out of this. We put two in, we get four out. So we have a net of two being made outside here every time for every sugar. Not a lot. That pyruvate goes in here into the mitochondria where it does a citric acid cycle. Let's go on. So again, the pyruvate, if there's oxygen, if there's oxygen, the pyruvate goes into the citric acid cycle here, where it pulls out more electrons, more high energy electrons in NADH and FADH2. They're not just carrying electrons, they're also carrying hydrogen. And they go to the membrane, the inner membrane. This is obviously the mitochondria, at least I hope it's obvious. We do make some ATP here as well, substrate level phosphorylation here as well. So there's in both places, we're making about two each for every sugar molecule. 
This is where we make carbon dioxide. The carbon that's in the sugar gets, that turns into carbon dioxide here or here in fermentation, here during aerobic respiration. Then we get oxidative phosphorylation, where we make a lot of ATP. Notice that this bang is bigger. Do you agree? This is a smaller bang, this is a bigger bang. You get a lot bigger bang for your buck with oxidative phosphorylation. That's using the electron transport chain. Tomorrow you will get a POGIL. I will print these notes, have them for you by lunch. Your POGIL, you have to complete by end of period. We'll go over everything on Wednesday and Thursday. It'll be due online at the end of the period. All right, have a good one.